Creed 4 better not have Adonis face off against Jake or Logan Paul. It will, won't it? Shit. So, how long have you known each other? It was like brothers. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to my channel, and time for another episode of Luke's Reviews. Lights out. It's round three for Michael B. Jordan, who returns as Adonis Creed, but also steps behind the camera for his directorial debut with Creed 3. Adonis Creed has pretty much done it all. He's made a name for himself continuing his father's legacy, and he defeated the son of the man who killed his father, finally settling that rivalry once and for all. So whilst enjoying retirement, Adonis runs into old friend Damien Anderson. As their past is unearthed and Damien's anger and fury is getting the better of him, Creed may have no choice but to have to settle it all in the ring. The past two Creed films have been outstanding. Ryan Coogler's first Creed was the perfect continuation of the Rocky saga, and Creed 2 provided a brilliant conclusion to the Creed Drago story that we saw prevalent in Rocky 4. And so one of the riskiest things that Creed 3 decides to do is leave Rocky Balboa out of the picture. Now for some, that's sacrilegious. Sylvester Stallone himself has been pretty outspoken in voicing his opinion that he just doesn't think that this is the right way that the character of Rocky should be treated. And to begin with, I kind of agreed with him. It felt almost rude to just remove this character from a franchise that has been built around his legacy. That being said, now having seen Creed 3, this movie didn't need Rocky. This story is Adonis's to tell, and I think with the inclusion of the Italian Stallion, it would have felt overstuffed. As is always the case with the majority of boxing films, not just the Rocky films, but just the genre as a whole, it's much more of a drama than it is a sports movie. Sure, there are plenty of boxing scenes, but the most exciting confrontations are the ones between characters or a character fighting against themselves. I thought that Adonis's arc in this film was really well done. The themes of childhood trauma and what the effects of isolating yourself from the past can mean are explored very, very effectively. I think his struggle to open up is arguably more important than the main event itself. And the way in which Michael B. Jordan portrays all of this, I thought, just just adds another amazing notch to his already decorated belt. Now, we all know that Rocky and Creed movies are almost as good as their villain. And, I mean, this series has had some first-class villains, or opponents, I think is a, is a better way to phrase it. Let's not forget, Apollo Creed was initially Rocky's first opponent before he turned into a friend. You've had Mr. T as Clubber Lang, Ivan Drago, and Victor Drago. Well, now you can add Damien Anderson to that list as well. Damien is such a fascinating character. His growth and development over the course of the first two acts is mesmerizing because he's reintroduced to a world that he doesn't really know too much about and he's just assuming that he can pick up where he had left things way back when. Jonathan Majors continues his electrifying path to be one of the top Hollywood stars. He brings so much to the character of Damien, using his performance to peel back layers of his psyche. One of the things that I really loved about Majors' performance is that we see how socially awkward Damien actually is when he is not in a situation that could potentially be resolved or at least handled with violence. I thought that 
was a particularly nice touch. Tessa Thompson is great as always, still trying to be the voice of reason for Adonis, and I found the dynamic of Adonis and Bianca now caring for their daughter Amara very sweet as well. I also want to give a shout out to Wood Harris. He has been in all of the Creed movies thus far, and in Creed 3 he's basically taking the step to almost like a, a Mickey type role for Creed. I think he does a brilliant job in this movie uh, and I want to make sure that he's getting plenty of credit. But let's just take a few steps back uh, and let's get back onto Michael B. Jordan because not only Michael B. acting, Michael B. directing too. I'm not proud of that joke but it's going to stay in the edit. And what a debut this was for him. You can tell that throughout his career, Michael B. Jordan has been really fortunate enough to work alongside some very talented filmmakers. And with that experience, he's been able to hone his craft as a filmmaker and also a storyteller. But that's not to say that this film is like a pale imitation of those directors that he's worked with. He is very much putting his own stamp on the film and of the franchise as a whole, particularly when it comes to those boxing sequences. They are so incredibly unique in terms of how they are shot, bringing to life boxing fights in a way that I simply haven't seen from any boxing film ever. There's an exciting hyper-realism to much of them, clearly inspired from Michael B. Jordan's self-confessed love for anime. But also, when it comes to the final showdown, Jordan does something very unexpected that I think audiences are either going to loathe or love. I ended up on the love side of it. I thought it was such an original choice. It was something so different and it was perfect for the emotional stakes at play here. I've got to tip my cap, proverbial cap, to Michael B. Jordan here. I think he has done a brilliant job as director, and I, I, for one, I can't wait to see what he comes up with next. Not to mention that there is a real sense of poetry to this, because Stallone directed some of the Rocky movies. I think he wrote all of them, but he directed a handful of them too. So it's nice to see him take these reins, not just in terms of the character, but also behind the scenes as well. Creed 3, though, it isn't quite the flawless victory that I was hoping. I do have a couple of negatives, the first being its runtime. Now, usually you might watch these videos and hear me say that the film was way too long and it could have done with trimming maybe 10 to 20 minutes off. Here, I actually think it's a bit too short. I could have done with 10 to 20 minutes being added on, particularly within the third act. The first two acts do a really great job at setting up the characters, the dynamics, and gradually building to this fracture in the relationship between Adonis and Damien. And ultimately, as we get into the third act, we have the fight being announced, and then we are straight into a training montage, and then straight into the fight. I, it was all way too sudden. There was a tension that was really interesting to unpack, and I feel like that tension gets lost because we are kind of almost running through the motions at full speed, and I just felt like it could have grasped the stakes of what this fight was actually about. It is also extremely predictable, which I don't think is necessarily a knock on the film itself. It is unfortunately quite a common pitfall within the boxing genre. We know how a lot of these stories may play out. We know certain results. And so when I say that as a critique of this film, it's more begrudgingly that, yeah, it just kind of follows the, the trajectory of what this genre has done time and time again. But those negatives, I want to stress, are fairly insignificant when weighed against the film's positives, because Creed 3 was a fantastic continuation of the Creed saga, and also marked a knockout debut for Michael B. Jordan as a director. It has tons of emotion and great character work, 
as well as heart-pounding boxing scenes that I guarantee you haven't seen anything like it before. Plus, check it out in IMAX if you can. Watching those fights when the IMAX aspect ratio kicks in, they just hit differently. I'm going to give Creed 3 an 8.5 out of 10. Anyway guys, those were my thoughts on Creed 3. Let me know, have you had a chance to see the film yet? What did you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Now my question to you, we are, I want to say what we've had six Rocky films and now three Creed films. So we're nine chapters into this expansive saga now. And I want to know, who is your favorite Rocky or Creed opponent? You could go with the classics. You've got Apollo Creed. Ivan Drago, or are you going to go for someone more recent? Uh, um, a Victor Drago, a Damian Anderson, are you even going to go for, was it Tommy Conlon? Something Conlon? Tony Bellew. The, he, he's not playing himself, but he's in the film. You, you know what I mean. Ricky Conlon, there we go, that's it. But that is all we have time for here today, so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Hello, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure to click that like button. And if you aren't already, click that subscribe button too.